In this video, we are going to learn how to graph the cosecant and secant functions using transformations. We're going to graph the function and then use the graph to determine its domain and range. Now we'll start with y is equal to 2 cosecant of x minus 1. And just like before, we'll start by listing out what the key points of cosecant are. And the way I like to remember them is I remember my key points for sine and just take the reciprocal of the y value to see what happens to cosecant. So for example, uh, 0 over 1 becomes 1 over 0, which is undefined, so that will be an asymptote. One, one's reciprocal is 1. The reciprocal of 0 here will make it undefined, which is another asymptote. Reciprocal of negative 1 is negative 1. And the reciprocal of 0 is undefined. So you'll see that wherever you have 0, it makes an asymptote, and then the 1's match with the 1's, and the negative 1's matches with the negative 1's. Now, since cosecant is just a reciprocal of sine, when we try to find its period, the period of sine is 2 pi, so this, the period of cosecant would also be 2 pi. So 2 pi over b will be its formula. But again, so we have an understood 1 in front of x, so the period will just be 2 pi over 1, which is 2 pi. So we won't see any change in the period of these functions, just a change in the y values. So first, we're going to multiply our y values by 2, and then we'll subtract 1 following our order of operations. So we'll look at first y is equal to 2 cosecant of x. So undefined times 2 is still undefined. 1 times 2 is 2. Undefined times 2 is still undefined. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. Undefined times 2 is undefined still. Now we'll subtract 1 from our function. So we'll have 2 cosecant of x, but now minus 1. So undefined minus 1, still undefined. 2 minus 1 is 1. Undefined minus 1 is still undefined. Negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3 and undefined minus 1 is undefined. So now we'll go and graph these points. So 0 undefined means we have an asymptote at 0. At pi over 2 we have a value of 1. At pi it is undefined, so we have put another asymptote. Then at 3 pi over 2 it is negative 3. Then undefined at 2 pi. And we can continue this pattern because it seems to be an asymptote, then one, then another asymptote. And going backwards, we have our asymptote. We are already are at one, so the next one will be at negative three, then an asymptote at negative pi, then at negative three pi over two, we're at one again, asymptote at negative two pi, then at negative five pi over two, we're at negative three again, then an asymptote at three pi. And if you remember what these graphs look like from the previous lesson, they make these little U-shapes pointing away from each other as you go from asymptote to asymptote. If we were to imagine sine or cosine on here, it kind of bends away from the sine and cosine graph. And just like with tangent and cotangent, these functions have asymptotes periodically throughout its domain. So we have to leave out certain x values. So like we'll use all x's such that x does not equal, and what it looks like is every multiple of pi, even like 0 pi if we want to include that. So we'll split k pi, and we'll say that k is an integer. Now unlike tangent and cotangent, this doesn't hit every y value possible. In fact, it misses quite a few in between two particular y values. It looks like negative infinity all the way up into negative 3, including negative 3, but nothing in between. So we'll stop that interval, and we'll start our new interval at 1, so bracket 1, and off into infinity. And that will be the range of these functions. Again, going over interval notation, these brackets mean that you include that point that you stop at. The union here combines these two sets that seem to be separated. 
So again, we include the one and go to infinity. That would be the range of y equals two cosecant of x minus one. Now let's look at y is equal to one half secant of negative pi x over two. So again, let's go over this key points. Again, secant being the reciprocal of cosine, one matches with one, the zero leads to an undefined, negative one goes to negative one, zero goes to undefined, and one goes to one. Now in order to graph this, we're first going to get rid of that negative inside the secant function. So we'll have y is equal to one half secant of now positive pi x over two. So because secant's an even function, the negative can kind of disappear and go away. So we can continue to graph. Now its period is gonna be two pi over b. But b is pi over 2, so we'll have 2 pi over pi over 2, which will be 2 pi times 2 over pi, which leads to the period being 4. So we'll go from 0 to 4. And it's easy to divide by 4. We'll see that it'll change by 1 every point. And that is what happens to our period. This means looking at pi over 2x. Now, since I was just changing the period, none of the y values change, so I'll just bring them straight down. But now let's see what happens to our y values when we multiply by a half. So y is equal to 1 half secant of pi x over 2. Again, my period is not going to change at this step, so I'm just going to rewrite 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. My y values will change because now I have 1 times a half, which would be 1 half. Undefined times a half, which will remain undefined. Negative 1 times a half, which is negative 1 half. Undefined times a half, which is undefined. And 1 times a half, which is 1 half. And now we'll plot these points. So 0, 1 half and then undefined at 1, then 2, negative 1 half, undefined at 3, and then 4, 1 half, and you're starting to see the pattern now. We'll have a lot more asymptotes this time since our period seems to be shorter. But maybe I'll get a little lazy here and not plot every single point possible. Because now it's going to take a while since I go through so many cycles of this function. Oop. Got to be careful. I almost put a point at negative 1 there. So again, make these little U shapes pointing away from each other. Again, don't use that point. We're using negative one half. And now we'll see our domain is chopped up by a lot of um, asymptotes as well. So we we'll use all x's such that x does not equal what looks like here. Is that one? Uh, 3, uh, 5, 7, so every odd number. So we'll let, as long as x is equal to k, such that k is an odd integer. And our range is going to be everything from negative infinity to negative 1 half. Stop. And start again at positive one half and go off to infinity. We're going to include negative one half and one half, but nothing in between. That's why I left that gap in between. You also see that I don't put a bracket on infinity because you cannot include infinity as a number. And that is how you graph the cosecant and secant functions using transformations.